here on Earth, there's a huge diversity of living things. Some big, some small, some really quite peculiar. Living things have been around on the planet for three and a half billion years. And you can imagine that life has changed a lot during that time. Now, if we were somehow able to travel backwards in time a few million years ago, we'd find a very different world. Some of the species that exist today didn't exist back then. And instead, we'd find other animals, some of them quite remarkable, roaming the planet. So we can learn about things that used to live in the past by studying fossils. Now fossils are marks that are made in stone by things that were once alive. And they can be things like footprints, traces of animals, or they can sometimes be whole bodies of animals. And these are the ones that are most useful for scientists. I've brought in something that's really rather special. This is a fossil. It's a fossilized ammonite. And so ammonites was a creature that lived in the sea millions of years ago. And what we have now is actually made of rock. And I find it quite incredible when you see how heavy it is, because it really does feel like rock. It's a rocky fossil. I'm going to pass it around. You can see how heavy it is. <laughs> there you go. How does an ammonite become fossilised? Well, around 150 to 200 million years ago, in the Jurassic period when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, these shelled, squid-like creatures were plentiful in oceans. For some reason, this particular ammonite died. Its shell ended up on the seabed, and the soft, squishy parts of the ammonite were either eaten or they broke down over time. The shell was then covered in silt or sand which protected it from damage and over time, gradually, the ammonite shell was buried. After thousands of years, many, many layers of sand covered the shell and gradually that sand became sandy rock. The shell survives but the wide spaces inside the shell are filled with water that seeps in through the rock. The water carries dissolved minerals. As the years passed, indeed as millions of years passed, the depth of the ocean gradually reduced until eventually the area in which the shell was originally buried was on dry land. The minerals form crystals, which are a kind of hard rock inside the shell. Over time, the rock around the fossil, made of the sand or silt, eroded as a result of wind or rain until the hard rock of the fossil is left uncovered and exposed, all ready to be found by a paleontologist like this one. The fossil record. Fossils are made in strange places, like the bottom of the sea or in watery caves. And so we have this great record of things that used to live in very weird places and things that died in unusual ways. For example, like by being buried by a landslide. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it leaves a great fossil behind for us to see. And so we have a wonderful fossil record of all these evolutionary weirdos, like deep sea sponges from the ancient past, whereas things that are more normal, like land, plants, and animals, 
are actually very hard to find in the fossil record. Plasticine. A wonderful invention. You can do all sorts of things with plasticine and here's something you might not have realised you can do with plasticine. You can make your own replica fossil. OK, so we just need to get the plasticine nicely warmed up and then I want you to make it into a boat shape with quite a thick bottom. So we can make our own fossilised footprints or replicas using the plasticine boats that you've been making and also using plaster of Paris and then all we need to do is to push something into the base and then once we've got a nice interesting shape we will need to mix up the plaster of Paris very carefully because plaster of Paris is something you need to be careful with. Put the mixture into the dish, leave it for a couple of days to dry and then you can peel away the plasticine and you should have your very own replica fossil. Want to have a go? Yeah? yeah? yeah. yeah.